Hello and welcome to another live lesson from Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading online DJ school. So today we have in the studio some monitor speakers which I've been playing with for the past couple of weeks and coming to some conclusions about when it comes to you as a DJ or a home DJ producer looking to upgrade your monitors to spend some serious money on a pair of monitor speakers. And so these are called the iLoud Precision monitors. They are the iLoud Precision 5, the one that we're looking at here. And the Precision 5 is the smallest model in a new range of three speakers from iLoud. Now you might know iLoud because they've made some really nice consumer speakers uh, which are the kind of thing that we've been buying in their droves as DJs, but these are the first ones that they've made that are, that are aimed at professionals or people who are very serious about their hobbies. And so it's something quite new. You might have seen when we were with DJ Jazzy Jeff filming our course with him. He had these. He had the previous ones, the smaller ones, in his studio, and he loved them. So what is it about these that we think is good? What is it about these that we think could be improved? That's what we're going to talk about today. So this is our look at the iLoud monitor speakers that you see here. They're called the iLoud Precision 5. So as I say, three models. This one, the Precision 6, which has got a 6-inch woofer instead of a 5-inch woofer. And the MTM, which is a bit more specialist. It's kind of longer, thinner, and it's got three speakers in it. Now, these are designed to work in all kinds of environments, but these are the more basic ones that are designed to work usually in a pair and usually for a DJ producer in their home studio or whatever. These are near-field monitors. They're not designed to work at parties. However, I have to say, these are a Class D amplified 175-watt RMS speaker. They are really really loud. So don't use them at parties, but they could do it. They are a step up from the KRKs and the two, three, four hundred dollar euro pound speakers that you can buy individually. So just like those kind of speakers, they are, let's just have a look at the back of them. They are individually powered, of course. So you've got an individual power socket going into these speakers and they're individually fed from your mixer or your controller. So each speaker has its own input. So this is what you get when you start to move up from you know cheap computer speakers or whatever. You get this kind of individual wired speakers. But that said, you're still going to buy them in pairs. However, as I say, these are a step up from those kind of cheaper monitor speakers. And they're a step up in a couple of ways. One, they are extremely well engineered as far as the flat frequency response goes from about 35, 40 hertz right up to way above human hearing. The frequency response of these is extremely flat. And so they are delivering the kind of trustable frequencies that you get from speakers that cost a lot more than this. So while these are not cheap, this is going to be one of the things that we end up talking about a lot in this kind of live review. While they're not cheap, they punch above their weight in a few ways. They've got a really nice crossover that again keeps that graph of the frequency response very, very flat. So that's the first thing. Now you can see that they are rear ported. There's the rear port there, and that means that there is no port on the front of the speaker, as you do get with some speakers. So you wouldn't want them pushed against a wall. That also said, they do have a lot of flexibility with positioning for a couple of reasons. So the first reason is that, let's go back around to the back of the speaker. Out of the box, these speakers come with a whole host of settings here that you can adjust. So for instance, we've got the one I'm pointing at now, which is a low frequency extender or a cutoff. So you could use it with a woofer, although I would say you don't need to because the bass from these is absolutely fantastic. Moving along, we've got low frequency and high frequency settings here. I'm struggling from behind to get my finger to move in the right direction, but I'm sure you know what I mean. Low frequency and high frequency there and there. That's right, a bit lower down. <laughs> um, these are designed to, again, tweak the frequency response to suit the room that you've got them in. And then behind this, there is a desk flat or calibrated button. And this chooses whether they are just a completely flat frequency response or whether they have got the mid and uh, the, the kind of low mid range boosted a bit for when you've got them on a desk in front of you. As with all speakers, you're going to want them positioned so that they're pointing at you. The tweeters are going to be very directional. And that brings me on to, oh, by the way, auto standby is really nice. You can set the auto standby so that it's, uh, they, they, they come on when something feeds into them so that you can leave them turned on all the time without using very much power. They've got USB as well. We've seen this. I'll talk to you about what the USB does in a little while. And also a control input. I don't know if you saw that there. I'll talk to you about what that does in a little while as well. So 
I want to talk to you about that calibration input on these speakers because that is one of the big things about them. You can calibrate these to fit the room that you're using them in. So what, the way this works is if you've ever used Sonos speakers, have you ever seen Sonos speakers? They've got something called TruePlay. You can grab your phone, put the Sonos app on and go like this and it listens to some tones that come out of the speakers and it adjusts the speakers so that they work best in that room. So it adjusts the frequency response, the stereo imagery, the timing and so on using the built-in DSPs. These do this as well and they do it using a microphone like this. So this microphone here is supplied with it. They don't supply the cable, by the way. They only supply the microphone itself. Uh, so you're going to need an XLR cable. But this microphone, the idea is you put it on a stand where your ears would be then you get out of the way and you head around the back of the speaker and you press some buttons that are on the back of the speaker that let you then calibrate them. And what it does is send a test tone through this speak through the speaker individually one by one and down the microphone and that will then adjust for the room you're in. Now you're meant to put this on a speaker stand, you're meant to put it there, then there, then a little bit behind your head and then the, even they say themselves look stick it in one position and I also think it's okay to hold it there. You know you're meant to put it on a microphone stand and get out of the way but hey you're going to be there in real life so I think it's okay to hold it yourself here. And then you can go, get your other arm around the back and press the button to calibrate them or as I'm going to show you in a minute there's another way of doing it. But whichever way you do it you have to take four measurements per speaker so that'd be eight measurements takes about five minutes and then you can really hear that they've adjusted to your room. And in this room the bass tightened up it got less flabby and you could tell it instantly but I suspect over time you'll hear more. Now we've already reviewed speakers that have this kind of thing. By the way if you want a closer look at the microphone it looks kind of like this. Oh, my camera went off there on that particular overhead shot. No idea why, but hey, uh, it looks kind of like this. <laughs> it's just a standard little microphone. So the, uh, the um, other ways of doing this, you can use Sonarworks. I've got some software you'll have seen us reviewing maybe the Adam Audio A4V speakers in the past that use Sonarworks. But it's about 90 different measurements I seem to remember I had to do for those speakers. It took forever. Uh, this is really quick. It's a really quick way of doing it. So you can get that calibration. They also give you, uh, rather you can buy, a little remote control. And this remote control lets you do what I just described from your sitting position, which is obviously more, more easy to do. Uh, but it also lets you do something that we're going to talk about in a second as well. So, so far we're talking about some powerful speakers. They really are loud. They're easy to calibrate for your room and they are high quality anyway out of the box. Low, uh, very flat frequency response, very good low end. They're, big heavy MDF cabinets that give you a real punch in the low end. Now you might have noticed I've positioned them horizontally and they've got a bit of a curve to them. So how have I done that? Well they provide little feet with them that you can put underneath and even on the curved end you can put them quite neatly horizontally there. I'm not sure if you're meant to do that but you can certainly do it with other ones in the range. So anyway they're solid on my stands there so I've got no problem with that. All right so far so good. But they've got another trick up their sleeve and the other trick up their sleeve is that they've got software that comes with them for free. Now the software is called X Monitor and again they've made this reasonably easy to use because around the back of the speakers, you might have noticed, I showed it a second ago, there is a USB socket here. Now this USB socket can be plugged just like your DJ controller into your laptop and from there you can then calibrate the speakers doing what I just showed you with the microphone but also you can do a lot of other stuff directly from the software. And the software looks like this. And this will let you see the differences that have been made by the calibration process. It'll let you assign things to the remote control like mute and so on. Although I would like to have seen a volume control on the remote control. But really, really cool. These will let you assign about 30 speaker emulations to the speakers themselves. Now this means that once you've tuned your speakers to your room, you can say I want you to play these speakers as if it was a portable Bluetooth speaker or I want you to play these speakers as if it was a really high-end monitor in a posh recording studio or I want you to play these speakers as if someone's listening through a 50-inch TV and it will play you what they would hear. Now this is so so good if you are a DJ playing a DJ mix and there's a lot of sub bass in it and you think how is that sub bass actually going to sound to anyone else listening on normal speakers? Well you don't have to guess anymore. Your speakers can play it to you and it's all because this software can push the emulation through to the speaker for you and let that happen. And then you can assign onto this unit here your favourite emulations. So you can have this set for you know flat, 
um, really high-end club kind of sound, um, a TV, and a phone. What's it gonna sound like when someone listens on their phone? Have you heard this new mix or this new track? Now you can actually use these speakers to get that kind of sound. And so if you're testing a mix, if you're wondering whether the bass drops out when you transition from one song to another, and it sounds great on your monitors, but it doesn't sound so good in the car, now you can guess that stuff ahead of time by having your favorite emulation set up on the speakers. So this is all pretty cool stuff. And I think what's special about the way IK Multimedia has done it is that you can get this on other speakers, but it's very difficult to set up. For instance, on the Sonarworks Adam Audio version, you need ethernet wired to all the speakers. So you need to have an ethernet network with everything on it. We, we set it up, we tested it, but it took a long time. Then these have made it simpler using simple USB wires and use, providing you with a microphone. Uh, and as long as you've got a USB lead, uh, a, an XLR lead knocking around for the mic, which for some strange reason they don't provide, you can quickly calibrate these and get them going out of the box. You don't need the software at all, but if you add the software to it as well, it gives you a whole new dimension and it's free. So let's just sum up. The speakers themselves sound incredible. They're very, very loud. They've got a lovely flat frequency response. They're realistic. There's wonderful staging. I love them. They are a little bit bigger than the smallest, smallest monitor speakers you can buy, so just be aware of that. They are thoughtfully provided with nice feet to make them easy to position and to isolate wherever you want to put them. And the ability to tune them instantly, I just think is awesome. It's just almost like a new bottom rung of what you should expect from this kind of monitor speaker. The software they provide with them is the extra icing on the cake. And that is what gives you as a producer or as a DJ who cares about how your mixes sound in different environments, something that's pretty unique. They are not cheap though. These are gonna set you back about $850 per speaker. And so you need to think very hard about whether they're for you. If you're upgrading from cheap computer speakers or just any old speakers you've always been using and you want your first monitors, honestly, just get yourself a pair of KRKs or something, spend a third of the price of these, you'll be blown away by the difference. But if you're starting to realize that you wanna hear your music, how other people hear it, if you're starting to produce and you want some really revealing flat speakers, or you've got a difficult room that you struggle to make speakers sound nice in, I think the IK Multimedia iLouds are a really nice option for you. So because this is a live review, I'm now able to take your questions about these or about speakers in general and answer anything that you might have about it, which is the beauty about doing these things live. But of course, you might not be watching live, you might be watching the recording. We take a lot of pride in helping you with whatever questions you have here at Digital DJ Tips. So firstly, watch on if you're watching the recording, because you might just find that someone asks the question that you want the answer to. Uh, but doesn't matter if not, just ask and we will help underneath um, in the comments. We'll get to you with any questions that you ask as soon as me or my team can. Uh, so let's do that. Let's go over to the, uh, to the chat and we'll spend the rest of today's live review talking to you about speakers uh, and about these ones in general. So uh, thank you for watching if you're watching the recording. But as I say, do hang around. Even though the chat is recorded, I'm sure you'll find something of use to you in it. Right, people, let's say hello to a few of our regulars, Keshia and Sarah and Papa D and Don, DJ Baldrin, he's got, got your coffee ready there in Washington State. Hi to Jermaine and Cabes. Um, hello to You Don't Like My Music. Uh, the Ruckus to Mike over on Facebook. Hello to Isomatic. Sarah, nice to see you, my, uh, my friend. Right, so yay, say a few of you monitors. Yeah, it's nice to talk about monitors for a little while, isn't it, uh, for certain. Hello to Mixmaster G, who's back uh, from the NAM show back in the, the Netherlands. Welcome back, Mixmaster G. Um, speaker technology hasn't changed fundamentally fundamentally since the beginning. Well, it hasn't. No, that's true. But, uh, you know, they're still pushing air. But I think uh, we can agree that a lot of other things have changed. What would you recommend for a club monitor, says Waka Ashraf, something not too big. So a club monitor, so you mean something that you can have near you in the club, not something to play to the audience, right? I certainly would never use a near field monitor speaker from home, mainly because they're not protected. They haven't got grills on them. Um, our favorite is the little LD Systems Dave PA system. LD Systems Dave speakers are wonderful little things uh, and they are just, they're built really rugged. They're not very expensive. Uh, you could have one of those as your DJ monitors to use at home if you want, if you're, you're not too serious about going up for something like this, but also you can have them uh, to take with you out to use in venues and so on. So that's just one example of something I would use for that. Uh, so um, 
let's talk about other ways of calibrating speakers. So um, you don't like my music says you can just use a graphic EQ on a microphone. Uh, yes, you can, of course. There's lots of ways of tuning speakers and any audio engineer will tell you that. But what they're trying to do here is make it as easy as possible to tune your speakers. DJ Majestic Eclectic says the Sonos app works really well. Yeah, it does. I've got Sonos speakers at home. And um, we were talking about it earlier, by the way, if you missed that. We're saying there's a little app you can get for Sonos speakers that it's called True Play. And you, you wave your phone around and it uses your phone's microphone to listen to the speakers that you've got in your room from that brand. And then it will tune the room to sound better with those speakers. It's, it's crazy how it works. Um, is this the future of calibrating speakers? I think it is. IK Multimedia are really ahead with these speakers. But as I say, Adam Audio have got a similar higher end, more pro way of doing it. Genelect do it as well, I think, with their SAM speakers. So yeah, it is definitely something that is coming in a lot for just bringing speakers. You know, lighting has been dragged into the 21st century, hasn't it? There's no reason not to drag speakers into the 21st century as well. Uh, so the game changer for me, says DJ Stu C over on Twitch, was adding a sub to the setup at home. Not for loads of bass, just to take the strain away from the woofers on my monitors. I think you're really right there. I think it can really help. But what I liked about these speakers is that they've got a way on the back here of fine tuning, it's down here. You can tune whether the bass is full or whether it deliberately rolls the bass off a little bit higher, which of course is great if you have got a sub. But what I found with these is that they're just so nice and loud and they cope really well with the bass out of the box. One of the things I personally don't like about subs is as soon as I add a sub, I just feel there's a bit of a disconnect between these speakers that I've got here with me and the sub. Now that might just be in my head, but I like to just, I just like to know that bass is coming from the same place as everything else. These handle it all right. So I know what you're saying there. It's not about more bass, it's about comfort. It's about the speaker not straining. These are so loud, I don't think that they'll strain, even on the five inch model. Uh, but thank you very much for that, Stu. Can they stand upright? Yes, they certainly can. I know it's unusual me having them flat. The reason I have them flat is so they're not up and in the way when they are, um, when they are, um, uh, in this kind of like shot that we use because all our cameras need them to be kind of low. I, I've always had my speakers in this studio horizontal. It's much more usual to have them upright and yes, they absolutely can be upright. I, I think I explained that a bit at the beginning, but just to make it crystal clear. I own a pair of nine year old KRK Rocket 8s. What am I missing out by not replacing these? You'll probably find that these reveal the music a little bit more because the KRKs will be starting to wear out now. They'll be starting to get a bit woollier and a bit too warm and a bit less revealing than a new speaker would be. That'd be the same with any new speaker, even a new pair of Rocket 8s. But also with these, you're losing the calibration. You're using the, losing the ability to A, calibrate that flat response so it works brilliantly in your room taking into account any reflections in your room, any slight things that are messing up the sound. And then secondly, the ability to then dial in different speaker characteristics to them. As we said, TVs, um, phones, portable Bluetooth speakers. What's my mix gonna sound like on those? Well, with the setup here, you can test that and you can't do that with more basic speakers. Uh, are crossovers still a thing in live sound? Oh, they most definitely are. Crossover is a circuitry that sends the different parts of the signal to the different speakers. So in this case, it will just be sending to the bass and the treble, or the, the, the bass and mid and the treble. Uh, but if you've got uh, a subwoofer as well, then the crossover is gonna deal with that. And that's why this has got that cutoff that I showed you so that you can keep the subwoofer um, frequencies away from this and just let that handle it. And this is, uh, they're shouting about the quality of the crossover here. I'm not technical enough to understand, but what they called it was some, something like a linear crossover. Apparently, you don't get that in speakers of this kind of price. So yeah, I'm not sure. I cannot give you an expert's view on that, but I can tell you what they say about it. Uh, right, so what else have we got to say? Does this speaker have software to download, says Alexis on Twitter, on YouTube, uh, or do you just plug them into your mixer uh, without um, any software? So yes, you can just plug them in everything, all the calibration I've shown you, even the four basic ways of switching the speakers between different types can all be done uh, without the, um, without the uh, addition of any software. Uh, this remote control makes it easier, which you have to buy separately. Um, and so you don't need any software for any of that, but the software is not on a subscription. It's completely free as well. So even if you want to use the software, you're not gonna pay any extra for that. Um, 
Okay, one or two more questions then. It's impressive that it covers that much sound dynamic in the different profiles. Yes, it is. I mean, they are really nice for using um, in that respect. They're, it's so much fun to say, what would this mix sound like on a phone? And the speakers will play it to you. I mean, that's craziness. Um, that's what I like the most about them. Uh, and then this is from the doc who says shelf speakers is a huge fraud. Never place speakers on wooden surfaces. It ruins the sound. A good quality sand changes the sound quality a lot. It really does change the sound quality a lot, but I'm gonna run off camera for a second here. I meant to bring these over and I forgot to. They do provide you with some isolation pads. Now these are really nice. So if you are putting these on a wooden surface and you just want to make sure, like for instance, you could be putting them on your desk, a lot of monitor, desks nowadays have got kind of like a speaker shelf, haven't they? But the speaker shelf is still made of wood. I'm just gonna damage this to get them out for you. We're gonna wanna get them out anyway, so yeah, my little poor little fingers can't do that. So what they provide you is these. I actually think these are really nice. I think the way they've made these is excellent. I bet my overhead camera is still not working, is it? Oh, it's working again now, cool. Right, so they provide you with these. See these little feet? And these little feet, they squidge, I know that's a technical term, and move around like this. And so the idea is that you put that bit on the floor and this bit on the speaker, and it will isolate the speaker from any vibrations or resonance. That's actually what I'm using on these speakers here to, um, to hold the, the curved edge of the speaker on my stand, which is a bit non-standard, but they're completely stable on that stand because I've done that. I totally agree with that. You don't want any surface that vibrates because it's gonna add, um, add resonances that you don't want to the speaker. Look, thank you for joining me today. It's been lovely to do a live show about speakers. It's a long time since we've reviewed a pair of speakers. There's a written version of this review over on Digital DJ Tips. Certainly it will be very shortly if you're watching live. The link is underneath, so do look there. Uh, but meanwhile, this has been me, Phil, in the Digital DJ Tips studio with our look at the iLoud Precision 5 monitors. A mid-price but really high-performing monitor that might just be for you if you're looking to upgrade from entry level studio monitors and you want something that is thoroughly modern with software configurability and of course, and we can vouch for this, that sounds great. I'll be back with another live show next Tuesday and every Tuesday, most Tuesdays anyway, at 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern and back with another um, show like this on Thursday, same time. And do make sure you tune in on YouTube, Twitch and on our Facebook page to join us for that. And if you've enjoyed this training and you want to get closer to us as a school, I'll give you a copy of our book just for becoming our latest member. Joining Digital DJ Tips is free. This is the best-selling book on how to DJ out there, so you're not going to lose a thing by joining up. Head to digitaldjtips.com and put your email address in, having clicked the Join button, and we'll get you into Digital DJ Tips as our latest member. Till next time, get good, get out there, make the moments, and see you soon. Bye for now.